Hi, this is Sean Overton with OneStepRemove.com. In this video, we're going to go over some of the basic assumptions that go into building an expert advisor. We deal with a lot of clients that have no experience at all with building automated strategies or working with MetaTrader, NinjaTrader, really any of the platforms. So what I want to do is give you just a brief overview of how most strategies run, particularly within MetaTrader, and to give you a feel for our process and to help answer some of the more common questions. So the first one was, how do I select where the EA is actually going to do the trading? So the example I used in the blog post is if we're going to trade the euro dollar on the 15 minute chart, how do I make sure that happens? And a lot of people assume that that's something that you select within the expert advisor. Instead, the expert advisor reads that information passively. You open up a euro dollar chart, you change the time frame to 15 minutes, and then when you put the EA on the chart, that's the point where it's trading that chart. If you wanted to switch the EA's time frame to something like the hour, you just push the H1 button and now the EA is going to trade on the hour chart and so on. So that's how you control that. And then a related question is how, what are inputs and what do they mean for my EA? So obviously there's information in an expert advisor that you're going to want to be able to change. A good example is moving average, and if you decide that your EA is going to use moving averages, is it better to use a 20 period moving average or a 40 period moving average? Most people aren't going to know that in advance, especially ahead of testing, and by making it an input, that means that you're going to be able to change it later. You can think of it as a variable, although that's actually different in the programming sense. From your perspective, it means that you can change your mind and you don't have to email us every couple of hours as you want to investigate new possibilities. So you can change that information on a whim. Another one I wrote was, it relates to the money management. And people wonder, well, how do I control the lot size that I'm trading? And that's simple. We create an input so you can change it, and it's called lots. And you select the size that you want. So if you want to trade something like a mini lot, you just type in 0.1. And then when your EA finds a buy or sell signal, it'll trade one mini lot every single time. If in the future you decide that you only want to trade one micro lot or you want to trade one standard lot, you just change the amount that you've entered next to lots, and that's what it uses. Uh, we can program other kinds of money management strategies. We get all sorts of requests for using a percentage of available margin, we get requests for making sure that your account equity drops if the stop lot is a certain if the account equity drops a certain percent if the stop loss is hit and so on uh, and if you have something custom that I've never heard of before we'll certainly entertain it and entertain it and more than likely we can put it in your EA the the next question is why do all of the scopes of work have a stop and have a take profit the reason for that is that they don't do any harm. You can turn them off if you don't like them. Just set the values to zero. Most of our clients, and by most I mean 99%, want stops and limits. We leave it in there by default on the assumption that you may change your mind in the future. It's more work for us to rip it out and more than likely we'll have to put it back in. So we just leave it there. And if you don't like it, we'll just set it to zero and that way it's not in your way. We, we also offer two types of trailing stops. We call one the generic trailing stop, and we call the other one a break-even trailing stop. A generic trailing stop just maintains a fixed distance. So if you decide that the generic trailing stop is going to be 50 pips, you open the trade, the, the stop loss is immediately going to be 50 pips, and then if the price goes up 2 pips, then now your stop loss will move up 2 pips as well. So instead of being 50, it'll now be 48 from the entry price but it'll be 50 pips from the best price seen. Break-even tra trailing stop works in a different way, but we covered that in another video, so I'd recommend that you just view that video and you can get more information about it. And finally, why do we have scopes of work? Uh, we have scopes of work because it's a communication-based business. So you'll notice that everything on the website, on the MetaTrader programming page in particular, talks about how important it is to communicate with your programmer. It's the reason people choose us because we speak English and we're based in the United States. We understand your language. We understand trading. That's the reason people want to do business with us. But the problem is that when you're communicating over the internet, it's very easy for person A to think something entirely different from what person B thinks. Same words, same situation, but they come to completely different outcomes. 
The process of the scope of work is to get us to parrot back the information to you. So we want to say that this is exactly what we're trying to build, and this is what we're planning to build. And in the process, we have to echo your thought process. You're expected to take the opportunity to notice things that we may not be saying. We may be phrasing them incorrectly in a confusing way. But during that process, we're going to help iron out some of the major problems that would have occurred if we just passively listened to you and dove into the programming. And that's always why I'm a big stickler about SWs. Uh, if you have any questions on expert advisors or, or on programming automated strategies, you can find me at www.onestepremove.com. My name is Sean Overton. Thank you for listening.